Let us all that we can to build a better future. Uh, those of you I saw were didn't really believe that this actually happened, but uh, Jimmy Dore went to the UN and uh, and spoke. And uh, I, I want I'll ask a question, but I was wondering. So, is Jimmy Dore being at? And we'll watch it, and we'll, you guys will have your answer. But is Jimmy Dore speaking a commentary on how much Jimmy Dore is at the top of this specific hierarchy of people talking about a topic, or is it more a commentary on how? few people there are uh, to speak on this topic that Jimmy Dore was picked. It's sort of a both and, either or, but I'll, I'll let you guys talk about that while we watch this. Oh. Members of the council, I'm here to speak today about the attack on the Nord Stream pipeline that took place one year ago on September 26, 2022. Four explosions ruptured the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines that carried natural gas from Russia to Europe. It was the biggest act of industrial sabotage in human history, severing the main artery for energy from Russia to Germany, cheap energy that was critical to maintaining Germany's industrial base. We have heard every Kotsimian ridiculous theory on how this happened. Now, you don't need to be a genius investigative reporter to figure out who was the culprit of the Nord Stream attack, incredibly. Most Western news outlets ignore the fact that the president of the United States, Joe Biden himself, announced on February 9th, 2022, that he would, in fact, attack the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, saying, and I quote, if Russia invades Ukraine, tanks crossing the border again, there will no longer be a Nord Stream 2 pipeline. We will bring an end to it. I promise you, we will be able to do it. Even with that pre-admission of guilt from the President of the United States, most of the Western press remained baffled as to who could have pulled off the greatest act of eco-terrorism in history. But luckily, we don't have to rely on my interpretation of President Biden's clear threat to attack the pipelines. We actually have Seymour Hersh, a genius investigative reporter with impeccable reputation and credentials, who reported that in June of 2022, United States Navy divers operating under the cover of a widely publicized summer NATO exercise known as Ball Tops 22 planted the remotely triggered explosives that three months later destroyed three of the four Nord Stream pipelines, according to a source with direct knowledge of the operational planning. And like all criminals, the perpetrators could not contain their elation over committing the crime. Shortly after the attack, many high-ranking U.S. officials could not help but brag about their achievements and expressed multiple times how they were proud of being able to put an end to the pipelines. Under Secretary of State Victoria Newland said, I am, and I think the administration is, very gratified to know that Nord Stream 2 is now, as you like to say, a hunk of metal at the bottom of the sea. United, the United States Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, called it a tremendous opportunity. Do you think um, Britain is trying to shut down the UN right now? To once and for all remove the dependence on Russian energy. You have to be a paid liar to not acknowledge the hand of the United States in carrying out these attacks. Not only did President Biden declare he would do this, but high-ranking U.S. officials have said similar things for years. We can look to 2014 when former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice stated that over the long run, you simply want to change the structure of energy dependence. You want to depend more on North American energy platforms, which is what this is really all about an economic war between the West and Russia in order to fill the pockets of rapacious capitalists who actually pull the strings of the U.S. government and dictate foreign policy. Yeah, just a reminder for everyone. Um, Saudi Arabia is effectively our client. Um, I, I'll get, I won't get on a tangent on that. Uh, Syria being invaded is so that the... Remember, the U.S. really wants to be the one that sells Europe oil. We are making an excess of it. Canada is as well. Uh, and we want to make money off that. Obviously, we don't want to make money off of 
making our kids smarter, making it easier for businesses to start by not having to deal with health care. We don't want to fix our infrastructure. We don't want to fix our pipes. We don't want to upgrade our connectivity of our internet. Those are really stupid investments that have long-term positive ramifications. We want the shortest term, sell the oil while the oil is, is money uh, view on, on things. And so we're willing to blow up countries and kill hundreds of thousands of people, as we already have, if that gets impeded. So slowly there's no pipelines that are going to Europe, except ours. And we're happy to, to pay to, we're happy to pay in lives of other people for the profit that will be made maintaining this process that Jimmy's talking about. So let's pull back and take a look at the context in which this pipeline bombing occurred, shall we? It's all happening under the guise of uh, defending Ukraine from an unprovoked Russian invasion. But of course, that's only true if you start the story of the Ukraine war somewhere near the end of the story instead of the beginning, which would indict Ukraine, the U.S., and NATO. The U.S. and NATO are to blame, which... Oh, really quick. Do you guys remember, oh, well, it's just recent how there's the, the TikTok trend that came out, and it's like, ask a guy if, he's, if he thinks about the Roman Empire. So many people don't understand history. Don't understand that all humans have the ability to do at a high level is repeat what is done before with different variables. It's um, AX, uh, uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You could put a dozen different numbers into that formula. You could put a, a near, an infinite amount of numbers into that formula, really. But the formula is still the same. The Roman Empire fell the same way any hyper level empire falls from overexerting itself externally and ignoring its people internally. And the U.S. is, how much does it cost to, to get divers to set explosives on Nord Stream? It's not cheap. You could probably build a school with that money. But again, schools and empires don't mix. America is likely not going to be able to solve its problems while we're still an empire. These empires look outside their borders to bring in money for people that make money already. Meanwhile, it's like if you wonder, like, why does every country in Europe have, 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 have health care the way they do? It's because they, they're not empires. It's almost that simple. Obviously, there's a little more to that, but this is what the U.S. focuses on because this is all the U.S. can focus on because of the way historically the U.S. has been put together which is why the Western media always leaves the origin of this conflict out of their coverage and leaves most people in the dark with a false version of the cause of the conflict. Most Americans believe that Vladimir Putin woke up one day and decided for no particular reason to invade Ukraine and start a war completely out of the blue. This is what supporters of the Ukraine in, the, in this war actually believe because that's the only narrative they hear from their news media which is funded by the people who profit off this war, the military industrial complex, the fossil fuel companies in the West, and of course, Wall Street. To make a crude analogy of the Western media's coverage. Oh yeah, I, so I don't know if this number is still accurate. Because in my head, the number is like eight or so years old. Maybe you guys can let me know if I have a moth on this, but I think like a third of the US economy is just Wall Street securities and anything kind of related to that bubble of investments, which means a third of our economy is just moving money around in very particular ways and not building anything because we outsource that to China. And we're like, oh no, China is a major power now. Again, a historical choice made in the past to try and deal with the power of unions and labor leads to the creation of probably the next empire. Maybe, maybe it'll be someone else. But China seems like a fair deal if they can outlast us. Um, it's everything is obvious. The world always makes complete sense. It's just we not 
we may not see why in the moment, but it always does. Everything always happens for a reason, even if that reason is stupid, especially if that reason is stupid. The bridge of the Russian invasion is the following. Let's say Vladimir Putin was standing on a bus stop and there was an old lady standing in the street and a bus was heading straight for her. So Vladimir Putin pushes the old lady out of the way of the oncoming bus and down onto the concrete sidewalk. The Western corporate media would start that story near the end saying, Russian president pushes old lady down onto the concrete. The same goes for the entirety of the Ukraine-Russian war. The Western media starts the story of the war at February 24th, 2022, which is definitely not when this conflict started. They leave out the 2014 coup of the democratically elected Ukraine government orchestrated by the CIA in conjunction with Ukraine Nazis. They leave out the fact that the Russian-speaking ethnic population in the eastern part of Ukraine, known as the Donbass, oh. didn't want... So there's a little bit of a tangent, but he reminded me of it. So you know how uh, that can that kid reported on this. By the way, if you guys don't know, I watch the show probably three times a week. Whenever I get an opportunity to, I'm watching. I'm just kind of lurking so you don't see me. Um, but I would love to ask the uh, Prime Minister of Canada, who is, who is his more right-wing protesting truckers or the nazi you guys invited to your uh, your big hall that'd be and who should the greater amount of consequences go to want to go along with the cia nazi coup government and so the newly coup right-wing ukraine government started shelling the citizens of the donbass via their henchmen known as the nazi azov battalion that ended up killing somewhere around 18,000 civilians in the Donbass. They leave out also, there was a peace agreement that was reached to end the shelling by the Ukraine government and the Nazi Azov Battalion, known as the Minsk Accord, because the people who broke that peace agreement was not Russia, but the Ukraine government and the Nazis. They leave out the fact that there was already an overall peaceful way to avoid, avoid war, and the slaughter of hundreds of thousands of precious Ukrainians, which... This gets down to another thing I've been saying. Do you guys know that Russia has the same GDP as Spain? Just let that sit in. We're fighting. The amount of money that America has thrown in to... And again, we make our money off of it. I mean, th think about it. It's sort of brilliant in its nefariousness. We tell the countries in Europe, hey, send all your old shit to Ukraine, let that meat grinder happen. We'll give you new shit to replace it. And so we then spend money on ourselves with the military industrial complex to make stuff, which we already had stockpiled for a long time. We really, it's like, you've seen like those, like the Abram tanks that are just like, oh, we got that, that lot has like a, a thousand Abrams tanks. We don't know what to do with them. They're just, they're there though. We, the government says to keep making them, so we do. And then the, oh yeah, that, that plane graveyard, those are planes. We don't know what to do with them, but they're, uh, if we just spend a few thousand dollars, we'll fix them up and make them ready. Oh yeah, we have um, these giant stockpiles of this or that. And so what happens is, it's just a shell game. We move the old European stuff and some new stuff, like the Heimers and whatnot, over to Ukraine, take that out of everyone's stock. And then the European countries get our old stock and then we spend money with the military industrial complex to make new old stock america makes money because all this money is effectively being spent on america if you're a wealthy war profiteer if you're nicholas cage and lord of war this is the best most prosperous most democratic time you've lived in if you live in Ukraine, you don't have a house and half your family's gone. Which was recently admitted to by the uh, Secretary General of NATO, who admitted that it was the expansion of NATO onto Russia's border that was the real prevarication, and the U.S. and NATO refused to stop their expansion onto Russia's border. All this amnesia is necessary for the continued aggression and warmongering of the U.S. and NATO to be accepted by the citizens of the United States and Europe. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta say one thing. I apologize for keep interrupting Jimmy. 
isn't it crazy how like when the Iraq war happened and then everyone realized it was a bad idea, they're like, we're never going to make that mistake again. And then the next thing happened in Syria and Rick, we're ne and in Afghanistan, we're never going to make that mistake again. Then in Syria, we're never going to make that mistake again. Then in Libya, we're never going to make that mistake again. And then we get, it just, when you, we know for a fact within about a 1% certainty, 1% error rate, how many people next year are going to die of a heart attack. We already know that in the U.S. That number is known. We have no idea if any of us are going to die of a heart attack. All this stuff is predictable on a big scale. Well, I'm here to cure them of their amnesia and remind them of the true cause of not only the Nord Stream bombing, but of the entire Ukraine war and the destabilization of the Middle East, including Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria. The reason for that is the imperialistic lust of the United States empire. The U.S. now has over 800 military bases around the world without being able to cite an actual threat to their sovereignty. The U.S. is now ending its empire the way all empires end, by overextending itself militarily yep. while it starves its own people at home. The real it's threat the is the threat of U.S. economic interests. The U.S. has for decades feared German engineering and capital joining Russia's natural resources and manpower. As elucidated very clearly by the founder of the U.S. intelligence firm Stratford, George Friedman in his 2010 book says, quote, Russia does not threaten America's global position, but the mere possibility that it might collaborate with Europe and particularly Germany opens up the most significant threat in a decade, a long-term threat that needs to be nipped in the bud. Therefore, maintaining a powerful wedge between Germany and Russia is of overwhelming interest to the United States. For the U.S., Friedman added in 2015, the primordial, the primordial fear is German technology and German capital, combining with Russian natural resources and Russian manpower to form the only combination that has for centuries scared the hell out of the United States. In this showdown, the U.S. aims to control the line from the Baltics to the Black Sea. Russia, by contrast, must have at least a neutral Ukraine, not a pro-Western Ukraine, because a neutral Ukraine would impede the primordially, primordial U.S. goal of a Russian-German fissure. The U.S. has opted for a proxy war instead. The Western governments are silent, even as the U.S. says through anonymous sources that Ukraine is responsible for the Nord Stream attack, but they won't blame them publicly. And so the United States continues to arm Ukraine to the teeth in hopes of extending the war and avoiding peace. The Germans say it's Ukraine, but will not release their official investigation and will not make an announcement. The final obscenity is that the people in the West who claim to be environmentalists and claim to care about climate change and the environment say nothing about the worst release of methane gas in human history, but in fact, whose actions reveal they don't actually care about climate change and continue to support this war and its eco-terrorism. In a bizarre twist, even Greta Thunberg traveled to Ukraine to meet with Zelensky after the Nord Stream bombing. Thank you for allowing me to speak. 